Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution Island Nublar as Sandbox Park. Thank you so much for bearing with me. Um, as I said previously, I'm running this alongside the main Let's Play series, so I do have to go in there occasionally and unlock stuff. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a bit of a spoiler alert here. I unlock the gyrospheres in the Let's Play series because we're placing those down here. If you enjoy this video, please go ahead and click the like button. And uh, if you're new here and you'd like to see lots more creative gaming for grown-ups, all you have to do is click subscribe. So yes, one thing I really wanted to do here on Is The New Blah was have a really large paddock that we could use as basically a safari, a herbivore safari using the gy gyrospheres. Um, we have a really large area, loads of dinos in here, a little bit of mix of everything, some large herbivores, some packs of smaller herbivores, and um, and then I wanted to have the uh, the gyrospheres here as the uh, the way that people got around it. Um, I'll be honest with you, the whole thing probably turns out a little big, and I may well go back and almost chop it in half. It's it's difficult to judge the scale, um, but I placed down later on. We 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 add a few um, diplodocuses and brachiosaurs and. Yeah, it's pretty big, <laughs> and they're like some of the bigger dinosaurs in the game. And even though those look a little lost in here, to be honest with you. And also, there's no way of increasing the number of gyrospheres that uh, are on a track. So even though the track here is pretty long, um, it only seems like there's ever three gyrospheres on on it at one point. So, which is unfortunate because. Uh, I'd love to be able to see a lot more going on, really, and a lot more sort of people wandering around this area. So, yeah, I think with that, both of those features in mind, both of those things in mind, we probably will go a little smaller with all this. But I'm really happy with how it turns out. Other than that, Jarosphere is really quite cool. Uh, you can place down a, a path for them to follow. Now, I believe later in the Let's Play series, you are able to unlock a drivable one of them, uh, which would be quite cool to come in and figure that out and have a little drive around this pen ourselves. But for now, we're not able to do that, so we just kind of have to imagine what it looks like. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it turned out pretty good. Here, I'm pretty much following the edge of the map to... Uh, sort of cap off this area here and we're gonna actually have a dedicated um, Hammond creation building on this as well uh, just because of the number of dinos we're going to be adding in here it would have been a bit of a uh, a bit of an issue really to keep moving them across so uh, the other thing we're going to do here is have a couple of the larger observation towers so this pen is going to be multi-purpose again uh, it will probably end up being a little bit smaller so these may well get moved but at the moment my original idea was to have it multi-purpose if you come to the park as you get to the Innovation Center, if you come to the right, you can check out these viewing platforms. If you go to the left, you can get to the gyrosphere. Because I would imagine um, that there are some people who would be a little bit uncomfortable with using a gyrosphere. There are going to be some people who come here who are still a bit cautious of the whole dinosaur thing and, um, you know, don't really want to go and get right up against them. So I thought it would be a good idea to sort of multi-purpose the, uh, the herbivore enclosure with both um uh, gyrospheres and viewing platforms you know much in the same way that when people come to theme parks you know they may not go on the big rides maybe just go on some of the smaller rides i i very much imagine that there are going to be some people who don't really like to uh get in a get in a, a big glass ball and ride around next to a diplodocus so that's kind of my uh, my thinking there uh, we're also doing a little bit of um, uh, sort of customer focused work as well. We placed down a few of the new buildings that we've unlocked on Isla Tucano. Um, uh, Tucano, sorry, excuse me. So I think we placed down the bowling alley and the arcade, I think, were the two that we unlocked. And we have a little bit of a wriggle round of the, uh, the restaurants and, and place it somewhere a little different. Uh, which works out pretty well, I think. Uh, we still need to have a look and figure out, as far as the game is concerned, how we're getting on with that. I think a few of the places we are missing, um, we need to add in some uh, food outlets and things like that. But here we place down the restaurants, and oh, the terrain does that, which is awful. Uh, so we have to go back and demolish that and figure it out a little bit. Unfortunately, what, what I would expect to happen is that I understand the terrain has to sort of flatten itself. Uh, next, you know, where these buildings go, but I would assume it would take where the path is 
and flatten to the path, which instead it doesn't seem to. It seems to flatten to the middle of the building, which uh, unfortunately gives you those crazy paths sometimes. So we had to go in here and just have a little bit of terrain work. It, it all comes out pretty well in the end. The other thing we had to get rid of was the herbivore feeder for the uh, for the two Edmontosauruses there, uh, because it's they they seem to not work on the with the terrain. Some stuff will move with the terrain, mostly the paths and uh, and the fences and the dinos themselves and the guests themselves. As you adjust terrain, they'll happily just sort of wobble up and down and figure it figure themselves out. Uh, but obviously anything um, that's a bit more complicated than that, uh, as far as the game is concerned, it, it's kind of stuck down. So buildings and, and feeders and things like that. So we had to go back and, uh, and replace that feeder. I don't think I do it on camera. I don't think I realise it's gone until the Edmontosaurus start getting a bit ill later on, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, new bit of power. Again, just something we need. Unfortunately, the power uh, op operations need to go in. I purposefully left this space here next to the ACU and our sort of first major backstage area free so that we could have one there. We do have the large power stations to unlock, most likely once they're done. I'll, uh, I'll go in and replace all the medium ones we've got here with the large ones. Just moving out the land a little bit there, again, just so we can have a little bit of a pathing here. I wanted to keep these open so we could try and get a few trees in. Luckily, we get a couple, not loads, um, but yeah, we get a couple of trees in there, which we're quite happy with. And then we go through to these um, power supplies and just uh, up the input, because we've turned off the ability for power supplies to uh, break, I think. Um, so yeah, I can't get a gate on that little one there with the... Um, Critonosaurus in, I think it's a Critonosaurus. So we have to just replace the feeder when it's gone, which is which is fine. I don't mind doing that. So here we go. Then we're placing down the uh, the map, the uh, the path here for the gyroscope. I wanted a few things to happen here. One, I wanted it to go through the forest at some point. I thought that'd be quite cool. One, I wanted it to uh, two even. I wanted it to interact with the monorail, which we do here relatively successfully. And three, I wanted these um, almost sort of encapsulated open areas that we could place the feeders in, so that you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to get to see some dinos. Turns out, actually, once they get started, they don't really. Uh, see many dinos really the dinos keep out the way of this thing and uh, which part of me is upset about but then a part of me thinks well that's probably exactly how a safari would go in real life and obviously if you remember the first movie the Jurassic Park movie they pretty much spend the first sort of half an hour to an hour on the island uh, looking at cages full of trees because none of the dinos want to come and show themselves uh, so yeah it kind of it kind of fits the whole law there <laughs> uh, wanted uh, some of the areas here to be blocked off from the path um, that's because the gyrospheres are an upsell. You are going to be paying to come and ride them. So I wanted this to be kind of hidden a little bit so that, you know, you really thought, oh, we're going to have to pay the money here to kind of, to see what we're missing, excuse me, see what we're missing. Adding in a bit of tree, uh, tree line here, basically covering up that back fence there because I wanted to try and sort of make it look naturally part of the island. And then uh, again, just kind of cutting off some of the viewing areas, not all of them, because you know there's going to be some areas where you need to have a little look at what's going on and see the dry spheres come past and things like that. Uh, but for the most part, cutting off a lot of the viewing areas there with trees so that it encourages people to actually go and use the gyroscopes. Uh, can I just point out that none of this is actually true mechanics wise of the game, it's purely just me coming up with my own little stories. Oh, we have a dead goat. In fact, all the goats have done gone, so I get rid of the feeder. Uh, it turns out they just they won't survive, unfortunately, they do just time out. So uh, we may look at putting a couple of little dinos in there, maybe a couple of little gall uh, gallimuses or something, I don't know, but yeah, for now at least it's it's just an empty pen, unfortunately. Uh, so there we go, placing down a bowling alley, we get rid of the restaurant there and place down an arcade I'm pretty sure we put here, which is again one of the newer buildings that we opened up. And uh, then what we're going to do is, um, is actually replace the path all around the the pond here, the, around the lake even, so as that uh, it matches these buildings, because these buildings have the, the standard path uh, texture as their sort of base, and if you have a different path, they don't really look that, well, they, they, they look fine, but if you want to try and fill in bits of greenery like I do uh, in a moment, it gets a bit tricky to do, so what we're going to do is place, uh, change this all around for the regular path. Um, and then here then you can use the path to kind of start to fill in these little bits here. It's pretty tricky, you know, it's not, it doesn't, oh, there was an advert there, but <laughs> it doesn't, uh, I'll try and get rid of that. There was, um, it's pretty tricky and uh, it's not something that I would recommend doing. It's, it's, you know, people will moan that the path system is as bad, but you know, the, it, the, it's not built for doing this sort of thing. Uh, how Rudy ended up doing his incredible uh, Jurassic Park logo using this 
path system I have no idea because I really struggled to get anywhere near uh, the sort of thing I wanted to do here so look we just have to leave that area green there for instance because I just can't find a way of getting the paths in figuring out the last little bit of interaction here with the fence and the the backstage area there I wanted to try and keep it relatively uh, close to the path uh, like I said before we haven't really got much interaction uh, space so uh, oh, not, we haven't really got many things that guests can interact with or you know fountains or anything like that so we have to use uh, stuff we have in the game such as the fences to kind of create little bits of uh, interesting stuff to look at as far as we're concerned which I actually think turns out pretty well I'm mean, a little look around here and figuring out where we're going to place the uh, the Hammond Center. So here we're going to place this as if it's a little bit of a backstage area. I'm going to place alongside it uh, the gate so that the actual rangers themselves can get in. We have a real funky bit of uh, terrain here. So it takes me a moment to kind of fig figure that out and, and lay that all out. There we go. About as best as we're going to get it, I think. And then here we have to kind of make this whole area relatively flat. Uh, as best as we can at least anyway and then i wanted a storm uh, building not that we get storms on the island here i just i just think these look quite cool and it's the sort of thing you would expect to see you know it's like a security tower i guess uh, that's that kind of uh, feel to it and then we want this path here which will eventually go over to um, what I think is going to be the sort of carnivore area um, I i'm not going to be building that until we've unlocked the better fences in the game again the fences don't really make that much of a distance as long as your animals are happy as long as your dinos are happy uh, the, the type of fence you use doesn't really matter to be honest they're going to break through whatever no matter what it is even a little velociraptor can break through a concrete electrified fence if you give it long enough uh, so really it's more about just keeping them happy i really want them a lot purely for an aesthetic uh, point of view you know you've got yourself a t-rex you've got yourself a uh, uh, you know a spinosaurus or whatever they're going to have uh, concrete uh, enclosures so that's definitely something we're going to bear in mind. Placing some feeders for the herbivores then. Trying to keep them sort of spread out and varied so that they come and uh, find their way to them and give the, uh, the guests in the gyrospheres a really cool view. And then we're just sorting out... Uh, um, Oh, sorry if you can hear banging, that's somebody outside. Sorting out our Hammond Centers here to start uh, working on populating them. I've cut that out because it literally is just a sort of sit and wait thing. Uh, but we have ourselves a, a flock of Gallimimus, I believe they're called. So they're the, uh, the sort of smaller animals, a little bit like the stretches that we've got on the uh, entrance to the park. So we've got a flock of those. We have some trikes and we have some Brachiosauruses and we have some Diplodocai and just all sorts of things. I've just thrown loads in. Here's some pictures to show you what it looks like. Thank you so much for watching. Like I say, next Next episode we will work on our carnival area as soon as we've unlocked uh, some of the uh, strong offences in the let's play thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed it you can give us a like it really does help out the channel and if you're not already don't forget to subscribe any thoughts queries or suggestions you can find them uh, down in the comments and if you fancy a chat you can find me on twitter i'm at john t sparrow if you'd like to join in with the geekism community you can do so over on our geekism discord server you'll find the link for that in the description thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one